ladies and gentlemen let's welcome sadhvi bhagwati saraswati our most honorable most respected who is with us for sure shri yogendra ji main aise mante hu unki wo bhi apne saath pakko phasti the हाँ वो आपका सरप्राइज था वो पीछे से मेरे से पूछ रही थी कि थोड़ा सा हिंदी में भी बोलिएगा तो मैंने कहा ठीक है मैं थोड़ा सा हिंदी में भी बोलूँगी और अंदर से थोड़ा सा हंसने लगा कि जो सब में से जो विदेश से आए उनसे ये पूछा कि आप थोड़ा सा हिंदी में बोलिएगा लेकिन मुझे इतनी अच्छा लगा लेकिन अनफॉर्चुनेटली मुझे मराती नहीं आते हैं अगली बार उसको सीखे आ जाऊंगी लेकिन थोड़ा थोड़ा मैं हिंदी में जरूर आ जाऊंगी क्योंकि काफ़ी पूरा विश्व से बाहर बहन भी है तो मुझे लगता है कि ज़्यादा से ज़्यादा अंग्रेजी में बोलना तो पड़ेगा लेकिन मैं बीच बीच में हिंदी में बोलूँगी और most beloved and most respected shrimati hansa ji all of the very distinguished dignitaries the luminaries of yoga on the stage and all of my sisters and brothers it's such a wonderful wonderful honor and blessing and joy to be here and i think that the founding the founding of the yoga institute on this day 100 years ago was by far the best christmas present that was ever given by anyone or to anyone the the theme the theme that they've kept today or yesterday and today of both of the events of the harmony that begins within and yoga the culture of tomorrow these are not these are not two separate subjects the two of them are interlinked and interwoven why well because when we think about the culture of tomorrow what do we want our culture of tomorrow to be war violence more decimation of our environment more fighting more of as vinici so eloquently and discreetly touched upon what's going on in america is that is that the culture that we are looking for for tomorrow of course not what we're looking for from tomorrow is the culture of harmony and that harmony of course as yoga teaches us as all of our spiritual traditions teach us begins only only from within we use the word so frequently sustainable we talk about sustainable development we talk about the sustainable programs for our planet sustainable development goals and yet i have a bigger vision and that vision is of a harmonious development of a harmonious future if i say to any of you acha tell me about your marriage theek chal rahe sab gard pe and you say well it's sustainable matlab that's not a very great recommendation for marriage it's not a very great recommendation for your relationship sustainable is this is this really the highest goal that we envision for our future with the sages and the saints and the rishis and the science with all of that that we know today is sustainable really our highest vision of course not our highest vision is harmony but harmony as has been told to us through these sessions which begins within begins within and goes without jaise bitar vaise bahar jaise swastiti vaise paristiti this is what all of our sages and saints and rishis and scriptures have told us 
This is what yoga tells us. Vinici asked, why do we need yoga in the culture of tomorrow? That so many people are asking him, who cares? When we have the science, when we have the possessions, why do we need yoga in this culture of tomorrow? And the reason we need it is for that harmony. Not just so that we can get along sustainably, but so that actually between us, there is oneness, there is light, there is inspiration, there is life. My, my favorite joke, unfortunately, Dr. Hedgeji isn't here. I think he'd appreciate it. Give him another one for his future talks. Is my, my favorite joke is the joke of the man who goes to the doctor and he says to the doctor, doctor, there's something very wrong with me. Whatever I touch, it hurts. When I touch my head, it hurts. I touch my stomach, it hurts. I touch my back, it hurts. So the doctor runs every test and every scan. And at the end of it, he calls the man in and he says, good news is there's nothing wrong with your stomach, your back, your head. The bad news is your finger is broken. And since your finger is broken, naturally, whatever you touch, it hurts. But it hurts not because the problem is in the body. It hurts because the problem is in the broken connection in the finger. And this is what's happening in our world. We're moving through our world, and our world hurts. I'm also from America, which I mention only because these days, tragically, tragically here in India, even Ganga Kanade, people who are so blessed, keep bajpan sevo Ganga Kanade rena ke avsar mila hai, so I mention maybe And in America, after having attained everything and acquired everything and achieved everything, the top 10 medicines that are prescribed in the country are antidepressants, anti-anxiety medicine, sleeping pills, and Viagra. Seriously, not a joke. We have acquired everything, attained everything, earned it all. But we have to take pills to do what animals can do. A pill to fall asleep at night. A pill to drag ourselves out of bed in the morning a pill to go to the toilet, a pill to procreate. Mahatma Gandhiji said so beautifully, what's the point of running so fast when we're running in the wrong direction? So science, technology, all of the, the modern world, what we're achieving, what we're acquiring, it gives us that speed. But yoga gives us the direction. And when we don't have the direction, we run fast, but we burn ourselves out. And this is where yoga is so crucial for not just the culture of tomorrow, but the culture of today. There is no one on earth who doesn't need harmony inside themselves. We are yearning. We are yearning to return to the source of ourselves, that source of infinity, that source of wholeness, that source of oneness. Every evening on the banks of Ganga, we perform the sacred, beautiful yagna. And no matter what the season may be, no matter what the weather may be, those flames of the fire, they always rise higher and higher and higher. And the reason for that is that the source of fire is the sun. The source of water is the earth, so water comes down. Take it to the top of the tallest building, and that water is going to come down. Physics may describe it, but the reason behind it, 
The fundamental reason is their source. Everything is trying to return to its source. And our source is wholeness, completeness, oneness. That's what yoga describes. That's what yoga gives us, union. That is our source. Oneness, union, completeness. And everything we're doing these days is in an effort to return to that. But tragically, most of us are going about looking, looking to expand ourselves by simply buying more and more, eating more and more, eating therapy, drinking therapy, shopping therapy. And what all of that does, aside from ruining my health, what all of that does is suffocate me more and more. It doesn't expand me. It suffocates me. And what yoga does is gives us the ability to return to that truth of who we are. And when we do that, when we really live yoga, live as united, live as one within myself and in our world, then these, these yamas and niyamas, they come automatically. I don't have to put a list on my bathroom mirror that says ahimsa, satya, asteya. I don't have to remind myself, stop lying, stop stealing, stop harming. It comes automatically. It becomes the nature of who I am. Because yoga is not what you do. Yoga is who you are. It's a noun. It's not a verb. It's who you are. And when who you are is yoga, when who you are is united, jab andar se wo ekta ki anubhav hota hai, to mein kis se chodi karo? Kis ko hurt karo? Who can I possibly steal from? Who can I harm? Who is there to lie to? It's all one. I don't have to remind myself, ah, surrender to the divine. That is my life. My life is bent. When we do the yoga asanas and we bend over, it's not just to give flexibility to my hamstrings or my back. It's to remind me, bend, bend, bend. There's a, a beautiful saying in Hindi, I'll translate it after in English, but it works much better in Hindi. It says, Jukta to vohe, Jukta to vohe jisme jaan hota hai, akar to morde ke pachan hota hai. And for my sisters and brothers who don't speak Hindi, what it means is when we bend, it shows we are alive. The way that you know someone is dead and a corpse is they're rigid. That rigidity is a sign of being dead. As long as we are alive, we have to bend and bend and bend. And the bending in yoga, Uttanasana, is not just great for my hips and my hamstrings and my lower back. Uttanasana teaches me Ishwar Pranidharan. This is how they're connected. It's not that I begin with ahimsa and I end with samadhi. They're interlinked and interwoven with each other. These eight limbs are different ways of entering that same stream of oneness, that same stream of union of yoga. And so it happens automatically. The problems that we face today in our world whether it's individually, whether it's in our family, whether it's in our community, or whether it's on our planet, we face them due to separation. The only way that I can live in competition, in judgment, in negativity, the only way that I can live pushing other people out of the way to get ahead, stepping on people's heads to get ahead, the only way I can live by using and abusing and decimating and discarding our natural resources and our planet 
is if I live from a state of separation, if I don't live as yoga. The minute that I become yoga, then automatically the choices I make are choices for the planet. That harmony moves from me seamlessly, automatically, naturally to the planet. What I eat, what I wear, what I buy, how I live, how I speak. From stopping to judge myself, from stopping to gossip, from becoming vegetarian, from changing my entire lifestyle, it's automatic. When I really live yoga, Lastly, one more minute. Lastly, our Dr. Hedgeji spoke about that beautiful teaching of sthira sukham asanam. That that which is stable, that which is joyful is asana. And that through which we attain stability, that through which we attain joy is asana. It's also life. We have forgotten. We have forgotten how to live. And let us look for stability and for joy. Not only, not only in that which we do on the mat. The mat teaches it to, it to us. Uttanasan teaches me to bend. But I don't forget to bend when I walk off the mat. In the same way, through my asanas, Yes, I attain that stability. I attain that joy. But that needs to be my life. Because when I have that in life, when I'm anchored and I'm grounded in life, then that's what I share with others. Then I share yoga. I share peace. I share harmony. I share love. And that... That is what our world needs. That is how from swastiti we move to parastiti. From the inner we move to the outer. Otherwise, yes, harmony begins within, but then what? Uske baad kya? Tika ab mein khush ho gaya. But then what? It has to move from inner to the outer. And that's, that's what yoga teaches us. And very, very lastly, just in 30 seconds, I wanted to mention, as I began with, just because yoga is union and yoga is universal, that today is Christmas. And it's, it's a beautiful, beautiful aspect of Indian culture that we embrace all, we accept all, we love, we love all, and that we understand that the truth comes from so many different sages, from so many different teachers, in so many different languages, and that the teachings that Jesus Christ gave of love, of forgiveness, of simplicity, are the same teachings that our rishis and our sages gave. And on this day, I hope that all of us will take not just that teaching, but this very simple aspect of how we celebrate Christmas of giving and receiving gifts, well, that's karma yoga. And as we take our yoga off the mat, let us make use of yet just an excuse, another opportunity to have a reminder to give and to serve, that on this day, may dusron ke liye kya kar sakti hon? Dusron ke liye kya kar sakti hon? How can I spread yoga? How can I make Merry Christmas for someone else? The same way that Sri Yogendra Ji and the entire lineage of the Yoga Institute makes Merry Christmas year after year after year for a hundred years on this day for all of their students and teachers across the world. Thank you so much. आज हमें विदेश से